Hi guys, and welcome back. In this video, we're gonna take a look at how to use Python to create an S3 bucket. So let's go ahead and take a look at this create bucket method here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that. If you're not sure how I got there, just go to S3 client, and then that's gonna show you all the available methods, and then the method create bucket will show up right under there. Now creating a bucket is a fairly straightforward operation. There's not a whole lot that you really have to specify for an S3 bucket. Honestly, the only thing you really need to specify is just a name for the bucket. Now keep in mind that S3 buckets are globally unique names. So if you create a bucket called uh, Amazon, for example, and I'm sure Amazon already probably owns one with that name somewhere, but uh, if, some, if you create a bucket with the name Amazon and then somebody else comes along who also has an AWS account and they, do, they try to create a bucket named Amazon, they're going to get an error basically saying, oh, somebody else already has the name Amazon, so you can't use that. You have to pick something else. So naming buckets can be a little bit challenging in that regard, um, and it's possible for people to kind of squat on bucket names as well. Somebody could take the bucket name Trevor, for example, and I would not be able to take my own bucket named Trevor because uh, somebody else, maybe another Trevor out there owns it, or maybe somebody who's not named Trevor just wanted to um, you know, squat on that name for some reason. So uh, basically what we need to do is specify the bucket name as the input parameter here. So that's just going to be the bucket parameter. And the Boto3 docs are really good about telling you which parameters are or aren't required during any API call. Some API calls are much more complicated where you might have four, five, six, seven required parameters in order to successfully make that incantation. But in this case, creating a bucket is pretty straightforward. Now, of course, resources are regional, including S3 buckets. And so we need to make sure that we have a region and the region itself is actually configured back over here in our developer guide on this session object. You can actually specify it, I believe, on both the session as well as the client object. Um, but I typically like to create a session object and just kind of use that as my starting point. So we're going to go ahead and create a session object and then create an S3 client, not, not a resource, a client. And we're going to call that create bucket method. So let's head back over here. And we'll drill into S3 again here. Actually, I'll just use my history here to drill into S3. And let's go ahead and call this. So over here in our VS Code environment, we'll go ahead and hit Control-K, Control-O to open up our home directory here. And then I'm just going to create a script here called 01v8s3-bucket.ps1. And then, oh, I keep using PS1. Uh, PS1 is the file extension for PowerShell scripts, and because I write a lot of PowerShell code, that's just what I mentally default to. So we're going to go ahead and change it to Pi here, and then we're going to import the Boto3 module. And you'll notice that you should get some IntelliSense here. You can always force the IntelliSense engine to activate by hitting Control Space in VS Code as well. So if you start typing and you don't see anything popping up, just hit Control Space, and that'll force it to pop up. So that's always a nice feature of VS Code as well. And then once we import the Boto3 module, we need to create the session object. This is kind of what allows us to construct a session. You could specify your credentials here. Of course, we don't need to, but that's an option. So we'll set our region name equal to US West 2. Feel free to follow along in a different region if you would like to. Most of my work is done in the US West 2 Oregon region since I live local in the Seattle area. And so that's going to uh, allow us to create buckets there, but S3 is a pretty ubiquitous service and you should be able to use S3 in just about any of the currently supported regions in AWS. So go ahead and just select a region that works for you. And then we're gonna assign this Boto3 session object over to a variable called Cess, and then we'll use Cess.client. So instead of doing Boto3.client, which is certainly valid as well, we'll do Cess.client and then S3, and we'll assign that to s3 client so this variable s3 client is the client object that the boto3 documentation is referring to over here so anytime that we see a method call we can just call s3 client dot create bucket so they just use the variable client here um, they also they just use some generic naming conventions like that so you'll see like response for the actual response that comes back but you can name those variables whatever you would like to so let's go ahead and create a bucket here and we'll specify a string for its name so let's call s3 client dot create bucket. And just based on the structure of the Boto3 module, you may not be getting IntelliSense back for the method calls here. 
Uh, unfortunately, that's not available. There is a module out there called Bodo Stubs that you might want to take a look at if you're interested in getting IntelliSense for that. But because the Bodo 3 documentation is pretty solid, I'm just going to go ahead and rely on the documentation to be accurate so that I can make these incantations correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and do bucket as a parameter equals and then a string for the bucket name. And I'm actually going to put a variable here called bucket underscore name equals and then I'm just going to choose a name. Let's call this CBT Nuggets S3 Bodo 3 Training. I really hope nobody took that name. Let's find out. So we'll plug in bucket underscore name and we'll save that file and we should be good to go. So if you hit F5 in your editor here, that should invoke the debugger as long as you have the Python extension installed. And so we're just going to run Python file. So it just runs as a script here and we should be good to go. Of course, we have a location constraint here. All right, so let's go ahead and kill the debugger here and let's see if we can figure out what's going on here. So I'm gonna switch back over to the Bodo3 documentation here. And as you can see, we've got this parameter here called create bucket configuration with a location constraint parameter. And if we drill down to the documentation for this particular parameter, we can see it is a Python dict. We need to specify a a key value pair for the input for that and then that dict is going to have a single key which is going to be location constraint and this specifies the region where the bucket will be created so s3 is a little bit unique in this regard because even though we created a bodo3 uh, session object that has the region association to us west 2 oregon the s3 service actually needs a little bit more specificity than that that's not good enough for s3 it's good enough for most services but not s3 so let's go ahead and plug in our create bucket configuration dict. And you can see if we don't specify a region, the bucket's created in US East 1, uh, which is of course not what we want. We want it created in US West 2. So let's go ahead and specify this parameter here. So we'll do comma and we'll add another parameter here. And then we're going to pass in a dict and we'll call this S3 config or maybe S3 underscore location. And then we'll go ahead and create a S3 location variable and we'll set the value to a Python dict. And we'll go ahead and grab the location constraint key and copy that and then plug that into our dict here. And then we'll specify the region that we want to create it in. So we'll choose US West 2 and save that. And then we'll hit F5 here to run our Python file again. And that should create our bucket in the US West 2 region. Sure enough, that time we did not get any exceptions, so we are good to go. So now what we can do is use the AWS Management Console just to verify our work. We'll head over to the S3 service here, and we'll make sure that that exists in the correct region. So here's CBT Nuggets S3 Bodo3 Training, and it's in the Oregon region. So that uh, Create Bucket Configuration option seemed to work pretty well. And so now what we could do is actually list the bucket with our... Python script here too. So what we could do is just grab our bucket name here and we'll go ahead and just create a new script and we'll call this 02-list s3 buckets.py and then we'll go ahead and just list it out and we'll copy in this boilerplate code so that we don't have to type it all out again. And then this time what we're going to do is s3 client dot and then over in our s3 bodo documentation Let's go ahead and take a look at the methods here. We should have a list buckets API. So here is list buckets. And as you can see, it accepts no input parameters. So all it's gonna do is just list out all of the buckets inside of our AWS account. And it's going to return us this response right here. So essentially it's a JSON object and it's got a two top level keys. It has the owner and then it has the buckets. And so the owner is gonna be things like our account information here. A container for the ID of the owner. Pretty sure that's going to be the AWS account ID. And then over here, we've got our buckets, which is going to be a list or an array of dict objects. And each of those is going to have a name and a creation date. So let's go ahead and try that out. We'll do s3 client dot list buckets, not list objects. <laughs> and then I'll call this bucket underscore list and assign the output from this API call to a local variable so that we can inspect it. Let's just do a print on bucket underscore list. And then I'll actually index into the buckets element just so that we get back the bucket objects. So if we hit F5 and run Python file, you should see a list of the buckets inside of my account. 
And then what I could do is actually just iterate over that and say for each of those buckets, I don't really care about the creation date. All I care about is what the name of the bucket is. So I could just do a simple for loop and say for bucket in bucket list. Go ahead and just print the bucket name field. So let's go ahead and comment out line number nine here, and we should just get a nice concise list of our bucket names here. So let's go ahead and launch this and see what we get back. And in just a second here, we should see all the bucket names. And it looks like I got an exception here. It says string indices must be integers. And that's of course, because I did not index into buckets here. I was trying to enumerate the root object in the response there. So let's say for each bucket in bucket list of buckets here, let's go ahead and print out the name. So we'll hit F5 and just run that again. We should get back a nice list here. Sure enough, here's a list of all the buckets that are inside of our AWS account. So that's pretty straightforward. We can use the create bucket API to create a bucket in a specific region. And then we can use list buckets to list all the buckets inside of our account. However, you probably notice that there's a bunch of parameters that we could have specified on create bucket if we wanted to. So if we take a look at create bucket again here, go down to the request syntax, you'll see that we have a bunch of different permissions related settings that we can configure on our bucket at creation time. Now you can change all this stuff after the fact using other APIs as well, but there are some things that we could do if we wanna create a, a private bucket, if we wanna give public read access or public read write access or authenticated read access, things like that. There's a bunch of different permissions options that you can set on the bucket at the creation time, but it's not super important because you can always change this after the fact as well using some of the other um, REST APIs that we have as part of the uh, configuration here in our Boda 3. So we have things like put bucket ACL, this would allow you to modify the access control list on a bucket after the fact and things like that. All right, so now that we've got a bucket created, let's go ahead and actually put some data inside of that bucket. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.